uh, hello again. So today I will talk about reinforcement learning and deep reinforcement learning. Uh, most of the slides comes from uh, uh, MIT, but I just uh, modify them based on the uh, talk that uh, I want to do today. So uh, let's start by, uh, sorry, I, my mouse is not, not working, so I need to click, I guess. So I guess uh, most of you saw a lot of times this uh, uh, diagram or uh, schema. It's uh, the schema of uh, reinforcement learning that uh, if I want to give a very intuitive definition, I can say that is a framework of learning how to interact with the environment from experience. So by sure, we have something that we called it as, as uh, agents agent will uh, do some kind of action to uh, accomplish one task in the environment and environment will give two type of feedback one of them is the state or maybe we called it observation sometimes and the other one will be reward that this action that you did in this environment has a good or maybe bad kind of uh, effect so this is uh, some type of uh, very uh, general uh, schema that we can see for reinforcement learning. Today, I will try to go in more uh, depth in each of these uh, kind of main components of deep reinforcement learning. But before that, I want to just talk a little about the application of reinforcement learning. Uh, I'm sure that you uh, heard about it a lot, but in autonomous vehicle, in uh, um, autonomous driving, uh, most of the time in the simulation scenarios, we, we, de uh, we design a complex environment and we train our agent, that is the uh, car, in this environment. So it is one of the application of uh, reinforcement learning. The other one is uh, uh, this one that is um, fine tuning or optimizing hyperparameter for deep, uh, uh, deep uh, learning. It's a really complex uh, tax, a task. So uh, reinforcement learning can help us to, for example, like greedy algorithm, to uh, um, uh, fine tune the hyperparameters in deep learning. In the middle, you can see, for, for example, uh, uh, when we want to do some kind of uh, in a, a stock marketing, when we want to do uh, some kind of prediction, for example, when we can uh, sell or when, when we can uh, buy the uh, stock, so we can use the reinforcement learning by sure. The other kind of application that is really interesting is in uh, robotic, robotic and in uh, simulated uh, training in robotic. Most of the time, the training will happen in uh, simulation environment because by sure it will be very time consuming and uh, very expensive for us if we want to train a real uh, robot. But the exact robot will train in simulation environment and after that we can test it on a real robot for example in this task it's uh, just putting some cube on the top of each other so the other um, usage of reinforcement learning could be uh, gaming the strategic gaming uh, game playing so you can see different type of Atari games or uh, other type of um, strategic games that reinforcement learning uh, proves it can uh, superpass human uh, uh, level of the uh, playing. So it is the application and I would like just do a very short recap about different type of uh, learning that uh, we have. We have supervised learning that as an input, we have the data X and also the label uh, of the data. If we consider it image, so we have, for example, the data and the label for each image. The task in supervised learning is map the uh, um, input to the output or to, uh, the output to the input. So 
uh, we have, for example, in this case, um, uh, uh, one image that co uh, contains the apple. So we have as a label, uh, for example, tag for this image that is apple. And supervised learning will be, uh, supervised model will train on this type of images. And when, for example, we show another image of apple that the model never seen before, it can uh, distinguish, okay, this object or this image uh, contains apple. In unsupervised learning, uh, the difference is we have the data, but there is no grand truth. We don't have any label for our uh, data set. So the goal of unsupervised learning is finding some kind of uh, underlying structure or pattern based on the similarities of object uh, or of uh, data inside the, uh, our data set. Uh, for example, we don't care that these are Apple or not. Based on the similarities, we just want to cluster them. And uh, reinforcement learning, we can say that it's uh, one category in the middle of the both uh, supervised and unsupervised learning. In uh, reinforcement learning, as an input data, we have a state action pairs. And the objective of a reinforcement learning algorithm is maximizing future reward uh, over many uh, times that we train the model. So for us, the reward, getting high, highest reward uh, that is possible is the objective of reinforcement learning algorithm. And uh, if I want to continue uh, the example of the apple, for example, just consider a scenario that we have uh, an environment, we have an agent, and the, the task for agent is being uh, survived for a, a longer time. So there are different kinds of objects in this environment, but uh, there is all uh, uh, Apple also available. Agent tries to eat different kind of things, but, uh, and when uh, it uh, uh, eat uh, or he it apples, he will understood that, okay, he got some kind of rewards. He can uh, uh, live for a longer time. So uh, it doesn't care what is it, but he understood by eating these kind of things, it can be uh, live for a longer time. So it is the type of that, uh, it is the way that we uh, define our policy and define our uh, reward for this agent in the environment that we designed. So uh, the thing that I tried to mention till now was uh, 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 expressing the word of reinforcement learning. But uh, reinforcement learning is not a new topic. It was there for decades. And the thing that uh, makes the, uh, reinforcement learning more powerful nowadays is uh, some, somehow marriage of deep learning and reinforcement le learning together. So with deep reinforcement learning, we are avail uh, we are po uh, uh, we are uh, possible to work in dynamic environment instead of fa uh, fixed environment that we have in supervised or unsupervised learning. In supervised or unsupervised learning, the a data set was available. We do the training based on the data set, and after that, we test it on other data. The, the data set or the environment was fixed, but in reinforcement learning, we have the possibility to train the agent or the model in dynamic environment, and this environment could be, for example, um, 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 uh, random, uh, random as well. It, uh, there, uh, there could be some kind of uh, uh, stochastic inside the environment. So it is the thing that make it very powerful, and uh, it's uh, thanks to the deep learning that uh, make it possible for us. If I want to uh, categorize um, deep reinforcement learning, honestly, there are different type of category, um, uh, model-based or model-free, but I prefer this kind of categorization that are value-based and policy-based uh, policy learning. Uh, for today, uh, my objective is focus on value learning uh, approach because I pre uh, 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 prepared very, 
uh, a small kind of uh, tutorial for uh, how we can do the coding as well. I guess that we don't have time to go to uh, policy learning. Maybe if you interest uh, on the on this one as well, we can uh, do another kind of uh, presentation for policy learning. But in value learning, uh, there are some keywords that we um, need to pay attention. One of them is the Q function that you can see it as a, a key that uh, a function that gives the state and action as an input. And there is another thing that we called it policy that is um, formulated like this. So uh, let's back to main uh, main component of uh, uh, reinforcement learning or deep reinforcement learning. From now, I. Uh, I use maybe the um, uh, reinforcement learning term instead of deep reinforcement learning te uh, term, but uh, they are uh, from now the same uh, for our scenario. We have something that we call it agent. The agent could be anything that can do the action uh, for us in the environment. So, for example, if you uh, have a uh, task for, for a drone, drone could be an agent for you. For example, in uh, Atari games, the, uh, the uh, uh, agent for you could be the, uh, for example, the things that are you uh, move or the algorithm. Most of the time when we are working uh, in deep reinforcement learning, the model by itself is our agent. So we have something else that we called it um, environment. Environment is the world in which the agent exists and it can take the action in place. So environment is the uh, world of the agent. So sometimes it depends on the position or the scenario that we define. The agent just have very narrow uh, view of the environment just for example in if you consider a mouse in the maze just he can see for example uh, the surrounding not the full maze but sometimes for example in a chess board we have uh, after each action we have a full view of all uh, board games so it depends that uh, we uh, how we consider our environment so agent will do some kind of actions to interact with the environment and these actions comes from something that we called it action space that i show it with a capital a for example there could be a scenario that the agent can take one of these actions and at each uh, uh, stage for example it can go up down left or right so based on these actions the agent will uh, 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 do some kind of uh, uh, interaction with the environment and environment gives some kind of feedback to the agent. One of the feedback that, that environment provide for the agent is the observation that sometimes we just show it by the state. So for example, when agent at the state of S do some kind of action that we show it A, the next um, state that will be defined based on the action will be shown by st plus one. And the other kind of uh, feedback that the environment give to the agent is the reward. So we show it most of the time with R, uh, R, R of T and the reward is back is a, a feedback that measure the su uh, success or failure of the agent's action. So from now, it's very matter for us how we define uh, the policies to give this uh, uh, re a reward as the highest uh, reward that is possible in the scenario that we defined. Uh, 